uh, to get into global health? Well, I mean, volunteering is a very good way to, to get in, um, but it, it's, to be honest, it's not that easy to get in from you know, as soon as you've just uh, graduated or even while you're still studying. Um, but uh, it's worth the effort in the end if you want to persevere down that career path. Um, obviously, there are traditional sort of volunteering mechanisms like AVI, which is the Australian Volunteers International, VSO, QSO, there's a whole set of global uh, volunteer programs which are for long-term volunteering. Most of them nowadays, though, um, are expecting that they will provide, you will provide some expertise over a two-year period. So there's quite an investment then in terms of time and effort. And often you need to have um, some work experience prior to volunteering. Um, so that is for the long term if you're looking at uh, a professional career. For the short term, I don't know if you have some Yeah, we'll thoughts. come to short term in a minute. But in terms of getting into global health generally, I would say finish your health science degree if that's what you're doing. It's often useful to do something like a Master of Development. That's what you did. And I did a Master of, what did I do? Public, public Health. health. Um, master of Public Health is also a really good degree to do before you head off and start doing your global health work. The way I actually got into working overseas was to be a volunteer first. We both did that. Because if you haven't got any overseas work on your CV, then it's really difficult for an employer to employ you. So to get that overseas experience, if you do volunteering overseas, it gets it on your CV. And after that, you then are able to apply for proper jobs. So that's a really good path into global health. Yeah. Anything else you want to say? No, I think. Increasingly now with the sort of job market in general, you have to have some experience, not only because it allows you to be able to apply for jobs, but also because people get to know you. And when you are looking at entry level jobs, there's hundreds of others who are at the same point in their careers as, as you may be. So then how do you differentiate yourself from the, the crowd? And one way to do that is A, to be known by a whole set of people and therefore you're more likely to pick up a job from the people that you're volunteering with possibly or those their network um, or, or secondly by actually having some experience on your CV. So it, it's almost a, a prerequisite, it's very very hard just to go directly uh, into a career without having some sort of work experience on your job, on, on your CV, because everybody else has got some. Mm -hmm. There's so many people who have some already. Yeah, I mean, the other thing that's useful is if you can get an internship somewhere like World Vision or Oxfam, then again, that will get you some experience, and you, with a bit of luck, they might then employ you afterwards into a proper job. So that's another. I suppose short term, if you're doing it for short term, it's actually a lot of work for somebody to have a volunteer even. Um, so if you're, in a, if you're looking at it from the institution's perspective, it's a lot of work to host a volunteer of any sort. And the benefit from that is not so high, generally speaking, from the organisational point of view. From the personal ex perspective, the student, yeah. the student or the, 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 volunteer. the, the volunteer, of course, it's a tremendous learning experience, and, and you'll gain enormous amounts from it. Um, but if you look at it from the other side of the coin, uh, it, it's not so beneficial. Therefore, the short term, it's, very, it's quite hard actually even to think of tasks to assign volunteers that are meaningful, both for the volunteer and that don't need to be you know, continually over, overseen or where you need some sort of professional experience already. So short term is a lot harder, um, but it does depend also on the type of experience you're looking for. So in fact, one of your students did some volunteering uh, at an organization I used to work for in Myanmar recently, and they ended up doing a lot of writing uh, and English and reports and, and just general things. So it wasn't necessarily specifically around public health, although the, the, um, the proposals and so on were in that field. Um, but it was something that they can, could contribute because of their, uh, their English skills and because it's something that doesn't require a, a great deal of practical experience in the long term. So it's about what your expectations are and about finding that, that match, which is the key thing. 
Certainly, if you are wanting to really add value through your volunteering, it's better to go for at least a year, and a lot of the programs will require you to stay for a year. And then it, it probably takes you at least six months to learn the culture, to learn how the job works, to learn a bit of language, and then maybe from six months onwards, you can start to add value. So it's we both went for about two years, and we went, which is the ideal, but I recognise a lot of people can't put aside two years to go. But if you, if you actually really want to add value to the country that you're going to, to, then you really need to set aside probably a year. And, and that again depends a little bit on whether or not you're looking to have a career, a long-term career in, in overseas development and public health, international public health, or whether you're just looking for an experience that will add value to your general career when you come back to Australia. So if you're looking for the long term, uh, which I was certainly when I was doing my mm. volunteering, Same. I, I knew that I was going to be in it for the long haul. So that sort of investment, uh, if you like, from all perspectives was, was a positive one. But if you're looking at it as a, oh, I'd like to add some value now, I'd like to make a contribution, which is absolutely right and good, um, but uh, for a short period of time, that's a lot harder unless you already have contacts in the mm -hmm. field. Um, and the other way, of course, is to to go a slightly longer route, which is to, to, to work alongside a, an Oxfam or a Save the Children. It might be, you know, coin collecting on the streets or whatever it is, but that may lead you to other opportunities with them. If they, because again, part of that thing about knowing somebody and saying, oh, what what resource we need somebody who's going to be able to do this just for a couple of weeks, stand in or whatever. Um, who have we got at to hand, so we don't have to go through a sort of a recruitment process? Then th they may look at their you know, who's close at hand, which might be you because you've been volunteering and, you know, collecting change at the traffic lights for mm. <laughs> you know, a number of weeks or whatever it is. So part of it is, a, is, a, is about that um, getting to know you and, uh, and, and people having confidence that you, and, and you put in. Mm. Um, a lot of the, the student opportunities you'll have to pay a lot of money. Uh, for example, there's a website called CIS and they will organise short term, two week, three week volunteer programs and you have to pay maybe two and a half thousand dollars and that includes your accommodation and they will take you on some excursions. You can go to Africa and look after animals, you can do all sorts of things. But you pay quite a lot of money in order to be able to do that. I know if you go down to student travel here at Caulfield Campus, they have a whole brochure of travel volunteer opportunities and again you pay quite a few thousand dollars but they will organise everything for you and you get to go and paint an orphanage or do something for a few weeks. Um, but aside from that I'm not aware of a lot of cheap ways that you can get volunteer experience except if you happen to know someone and it just happens to fall into your lap. Do you want to add anything? Yeah, actually, I don't. No, it's very hard. <laughs> I think that's the that's the, the bottom line for all of those reasons, um, which we, we discussed in the in the previous question about how much effort it takes to do it. Uh, some of it is luck, really, um, and knowing uh, organisations and people who you can who you can talk to. Um, I mean, I you could really probably know. try and send off random emails to organisations that do work overseas or even find out some of the NGOs that are working in a country that you would like to visit and send off an email and just say, hey, I'm just finishing off my health science degree and do you need anyone to come along and help do some work? I can do anything, filing, writing proposals, whatever you want, and you might be lucky. Um, yeah, I think again, that's the, an important point though, is that don't set your expectations too high in terms of the types of things that you're going to be doing. You know, you're not going. If you're lucky enough to land a, a, an opportunity, um, you, at most you you might may get to get out to the field and, and have a look at some programs, which of course is an you know excellent experience, and that makes it all worthwhile. But in terms of again, what you're able to contribute and what opportunities there are for short-term types of work, it's going to be something like filing or well, actually we need somebody to to uh, write this report, or could you edit this because. You know, our national staff actually, um, you know, their English is not great and this has to go to USAID or to Aus AusAid or whoever in the next uh, short period of time. Um, but again, it's about getting your foot in the door, so uh, you just d do whatever, you know, is possible. Um, 
and other things emerge out of that. Uh, so it's just getting your foot in the door, really. But it's probably better to wait towards the end of your degree because once you, if you've actually graduated and you're a new graduate and you can say, I've just got my degree now, then you're probably more attractive than someone who's done a year of uni and has very little skills and things to offer. Um, from the point of view of being the volunteer and going over and having a few weeks as a volunteer doing something worthwhile, I think it's fantastic. It's so helpful for you as a person to grow, to get that opportunity to see what it's like to be in a different culture, to see perhaps people who come from a much poorer environment than the one that we're used to here in Australia. And it will enrich you as a person. Absolutely, that's brilliant. If you're looking at it from how much help you actually are giving to the people that you are going to try and help, you might give a little bit of help, um, but it won't be, you probably won't make a huge difference. But does that matter? If you are growing a lot from that as a person, that's a really worthwhile investment, I think. Mm. Do you want to add anything? No, not really. I think it's a volunteer, volunteerism as opposed to volunteerism, but volunteerism in general is, is, a, is a positive force for good. So as a moral imperative for doing the right thing, it's absolutely right, as well as the fact that you're going to grow out of it. Um, and who knows what it leads to as well. Um, it, it alters your perspectives on life, even a short period of time. You can have the type of experience that will change the way that you view the world. So I'd say go for it. Would you say that volunteerism is a good stepping stone to doing then, like you said before, year-long placements into mm -hmm. volunteering? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's probably a good idea because you get to have that two-week taster mm -hmm. to see what it's like to actually be living in a different culture and is that something that you would like to do for a year or you might get there and just think, I couldn't cope with this for a year, it's fine for two weeks, but no, this is just way out of my comfort zone. So it's a really good taster. If you do go down that career path, then uh, you will have a multitude of different experiences every single day of your life and you'll be learning constantly, learning about yourself and learning about others uh, while making a contribution, hopefully, um, as, at the same time. So I encourage you to do it. I'd just like to say that if you're considering a career in global health, you should go for it. It's a really rewarding career. We have both spent a lot of our lives working overseas and it's been an amazing experience from a personal point of view. Um, I can't recommend it too highly as, as something that will give you a lot of job satisfaction and you will be able to make a difference with a bit of luck.